Mm, I like this color. All right, much better. What's going on everybody? If you are new to the channel, my name is Sam. And in this video, we're gonna be going over the top seven computer science books that I recommend. This was originally gonna be the top four or five books, but I wasn't able to narrow it down because all these books are awesome and they all deserve recognition and they're all important for learning computer science fundamentals. None of these will be anything like Intro to Python or Java for Beginners. These books cover the core concepts of CS and they are books that you would find in many uh, you know, university computer science curriculums. But if this video does do well, I will make a follow-up video where I talk about coding books that I recommend. So make sure you guys hit that like button. Now these books are not in any particular order, um, but we do have a lot to cover, so let's jump into the first book. All right, the first book we have is Introduction to Algorithms, third edition by these four guys. Now, most software engineering interviews that you go to are gonna ask you about data structures and algorithms. So algorithms is, you know, one half of that equation there. But aside from employment, uh, algorithms are really important for efficiently solving complex problems. Efficient in terms of how long an algorithm takes to run, how much space does it use, um, you know, how, how does it scale when there's a lot of input? Because we only have a finite amount of space and a finite amount of time to work with. Now, if we wanna take a look at the table of contents here, we see it talks about the growth of functions that gets into big O complexity, which measures the efficiency of an algorithm. Then we have divide and conquer, which are some of the first algorithms you learn, something like a binary search. And then it gets to more complex things like sorting, trees, uh, even dynamic programming. You get into graph algorithms, which are very important. You know, you have your breadth first search, your depth first search, and then it gets into a little bit more obscure algorithms. I would say you you don't need to learn all of these. A lot of these chapters can be used for reference if you ever need to, you know, use, you know, learn one of these topics in the future. But yeah, it does get pretty complex. So definitely not for the faint of heart, but overall, you know, one of the best books for algorithms out there. The next book we have is C++ plus data structures, a lot of pluses in there. It is by Nail, Nell Dale and is, is the third edition. Now I would say this book is not only good for learning data structures, but for how to structure your program. So it does have great lessons in software engineering. So it goes over some of the engineering and object oriented programming principles and then jumps into the data structures. So you're looking at things like link lists, stacks, queues. You're looking at recursion, which it's interesting that it would be in this book. I feel like it would be more in the related to the algorithms book, but it is in there. We have binary search trees uh, and then uh, and some more advanced data structures like priority queues, heaps, graphs and sets. And finally, finishing off with searching and sorting. The thing that I like about this book is that everything in here is pretty commonly used. Unlike the previous book where there was a lot of obscure chapters in there, algorithms that I haven't even heard of, everything is, is pretty relevant in this book. I also thought the code examples in this book were very clean and the images and figures were very intuitive. Uh, the only thing I wish was there was a version of this book in Java or Python because I just feel like, uh, you know, more people know those languages, but nonetheless, it is a fantastic book overall. Next up, we have The Art of Assembly Language, second edition by Randall Hyde. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna do any books that teach a programming language, but assembly language is, is usually learned in order to get a better understanding of a computer's architecture. I know some people might be doing work in assembly language, but honestly, unless you're doing something like comp compiler design or, or something very specific like that, most software developers will never touch assembly. You're mostly learning it so you know you can learn about the assembler as well as how the architecture of a CPU works. So this book teaches you how to write programs by working with CPU registers. Now there are a lot of different types of assembly languages and you know they'll all differ based on which CPU architecture you're working with. The cool thing that differentiates this book with all the other assembly language books is they actually create their own assembly language. It's called HLA or high level assembly. Native assembly language is, is pretty ugly and hard to read. This changes things so that the uh, the assembly language statements look more like a high level language, something like you would see in, in a Java program. So it has things like uh, variables, loops, as I'm looking at my notes here, variables, loops, functions, and even classes. So it's 
meant to be pretty easy to pick up so you don't have to go through the you know the work of trying to pick up an, a new assembly language and the architecture that's specific to it so you can focus more just on the fundamentals so overall great book that is why i put this on my list next up we have the only book on here which i actually have the physical copy of because nowadays i mean it's just easier to have a pdf but it is at least look cooler to have the physical copy and i can even use it for my thumbnail so I got this book as part of my systems programming class. It, it really gives you the, the big picture of how an operating system works and how you can, you know, write code to interact with the operating system. You know, you learn things about how every program lives inside of a process. You learn about inter process communication, how two processes talk to each other via pipes. You implement uh, command line programs. Like if you, if you guys use the command line, you know the program like LS, which lists the contents of a directory. You actually implement that. You learn about using threads to make your programs function concurrently and, and how you can, you know, run into potential pitfalls like data racing. Now, none of what I just said might have made any sense then that's probably because you probably haven't taken a operating systems class but basically it'll help you with the following it'll get you comfortable with the command line i know this thing used to scare the heck out of me but now i love using it and it'll get you familiar or better with c because linux systems programming is done in c and uh, it's really a great introductory for how the operating system works and how to write code that uh, makes a lot of system calls so i highly recommend this book i would say this might even be my favorite book out of the seven. So, you know, obviously I liked it a lot and it was very helpful for me. All right, next up we have Operating System Concepts, AKA the Dinosaur Book. This is the ninth edition and it's by Abraham Silberschatz. So the previous book shows how to interact with the operating system. This book actually shows you the inner workings of it. And really it's considered one of the best books for learning operating systems. It again goes over things like processes and threads, but it also talks about how some things like the CPU scheduler works. So a CPU with, uh, let's say it has one core, can only run one process at a time, but your operating system has multiple processes running concurrently and, and living in memory. So you have to kind of like, you know, Think about how how does the operating system handle that also your your ram only has a finite amount of space what do you do when that space fills up you use virtual memory you learn about things like the dining philosophers program which talks about deadlocks in your operating system so this book goes into a lot of the you know problems and design decisions operating system developers have to make uh, it is mostly theoretical though so there is not a lot of code samples the next book we have is introduction to the theory of computation by michael sipser this book is is really hard to summarize in just a few minutes but if, if you're really interested behind the theory of how computers work this is the book for you you, you learn about turing machines so you know alan turing he's considered the father of computer science um, he's also featured in the movie the imitation game he invented something called the Turing machine, which is a theoretical model of how modern day computers work. It simulates how a CPU would work with random access memory. And the cool thing about this book is you don't really need any programming knowledge. You don't need, need any prerequisites. Anyone can pick up this, learn, this book and learn. Although without a professor uh, explaining the concepts, uh, this, you know, I personally probably wouldn't have been able to uh, understand the topics because it's, it's very notation heavy, which uh, can be pretty scary at first. So yeah, I mean, I, I took this for our theory of computation class. I liked it so much that I took the graduate level course as well, which we, we start to look at a little bit uh, of the later chapters in this book that we don't cover in the introductory course. So yeah, over, overall, um, an amazing book and a book that I would recommend to every computer scientist. And finally, we are throwing a math book in here. Uh, it's called Discrete Mathematics and Its Applications by Kenneth Rosen. This was a book that I studied uh, during my discrete math class. And I actually had to pay for this book because I rented it from Amazon and then I lost it and it was like $150. So that wasn't fun, but it was still a good book. This is another book where you don't need any programming experience. Um, you know, any algorithm in here is mostly just pseudocode, but, but there's a lot of good theory in here. Uh, you know, you look at proofs initially, like uh, there's a classic problem of proving why the square root of two is irrational. So you learn about that. You look at sets and set operations. You look at big O notation again, um, as well as, you know, you get into number theory and cryptography. 
So this is really just another book that teaches you skill sets to add to your arsenal of knowledge. So it's, it is a really long book, like 800 pages. Uh, I don't think we even made it past the sixth chapter uh, in, you know, we were in a quarter long system. But, you know, overall, a lot of good concepts in here and a, a book that I had to recommend. All right, guys, that is the seven top computer science books that I would recommend. If you do have any books that you would recommend that I didn't mention, you know, be sure to leave them down in the comments. And again, make sure you guys hit that like button because if this video does well, I will be making another video of these where I talk about uh, books related to programming and, and specific coding languages. So um, yeah, that's all I want to go over in this book. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.